you. We're curious too. Opinion X. Captivating curiosity. InsureTechs are making a name for themselves in their own right. They're revitalizing the industry by bridging the gap between customers and insurers, designing new products that hit the industry's key pain points to satisfy customers on another level. Today, we speak to Nabi Mariam, CEO of CoverHero, who's amongst those whose products are leading the forefront of change. We see two different kinds of, of startups in the industry. One that are looking at providing an end-to-end -end solution to a customer segment across product, product lines. Then we see various different tools. We call this enabling technology companies that are coming into the, uh, into the marketplace, collaboratively working together with incumbents to help them increase their efficiency or solve a problem across the value chain. So it's not, it's not the kind of, you know, we haven't seen, I don't think we will see the uberfication of insurance industry because it is very complex and there are a lot of regulatory and compliance hurdles as well. The analogy that I like to use is for startups when we are starting from scratch, we have the ability to navigate and move like a jet ski. For the incumbents, it's it's more challenging to be able to move such a big beast um, and it's going to take time and there are a lot of risks involved in protecting the existing customer base and segments and you know moving the data um, from the legacy to to the cloud and and I think there are a lot of people that uh, the companies are not oblivious to this um, some of them are quite progressive and then there's always the laggards that are a bit late to the game. Uh, so the, the challenge for the insurance industry is simplification of a very complex product. Uh, a good example is the product disclosure statement, which is kind of like the binding agreement between a user and the insurer. And it is designed in a way that, you know, an average person, one, does not have the patience to read, two, the jargon is, is just not conducive to empower people to make good financial decisions. So I think that's where the thinking should come around. How do we simplify it? How do we remove the jargon? Also then meet the compliance and the regulatory requirements as well. So think about creating new products that is going to protect the risks, various different risks of the, the different generations and their lifestyle choices, then build the technology to serve those customer needs rather than building a one size kind of fits all kind of products and expecting people to to buy the product and and that is not going to happen so the way we think about insurance isn't um how do we build how do we build tech tech isn't the first decision that we make we go into the psychology of an individual, how, where society is going, what are the key drivers of society. Um, we've got four generations in the workplace at the moment with Gen Zs, Ys, Xs and baby boomers. And all of these different generations live in very different, unique ways with different, different um, needs at different points. So for us, we look at the rise of entrepreneurship the rise of non-traditional workforce. Uh, and with that comes a whole new range of um, challenges, a whole new range of risk profiles that needs protection. So we look at those trends and then start designing products that can holistically protect someone um, if there is an unfortunate incident. So we launched our product called Hustle Cover. Um, in January this year and the idea behind Hustle Cover being an entrepreneur myself and a lot of the circles that I operate in have like we feel the same kind of challenges and not having financial safety net or not having financial security is a real real challenge for, for our generations or anyone that want to work for themselves. 
Traditionally, uh, all of these benefits are designed for someone who is in a traditional job where you have security and predictability, um, but there is a huge segment of the market that is going at self-empowerment and self-employment and that needs protection. And it is not just an insurance industry issue, it is a society issue and something that needs to be looked at. Um, and in the self-employment, there are there, there's like the top of the pyramid is where you're creating businesses and you might have some level of um, financial security and you're doing it by choice. Then you have the bottom of that self-employment pyramid is you're doing it out of necessity. For example, you're getting, you, you might have gotten made redundant or stood off during this time and you don't have the ability to find employment, then you might have to go and drive for Uber or you might have to go into the typical gig economy uh, kind of jobs. And that might be a short term transient, need to pay the bills, need to pay rent kind of um, endeavor. But those people are the groups that are most at risk. And if something did happen to them, then what do we do about that? So there's a responsibility that needs to come from the, the from, from us in terms of designing about for these different needs. Then the platforms that have these users, they have some level of responsibility as well in, in terms of protecting the user base. So it's a very collaborative um, kind of working model where we work with the platforms that have this particular uh, kind of user base. Technology is an avenue to make our lives better and it can be used to enhance. Um, and like I said before, rather than trying to change the behavior of the user, we need to create products to meet the user and interact with them the way they like. So older generations might not be really tech savvy. They might not even want to use digital platforms to lodge a claim. They might want to just pick up the phone and talk to someone. And if that is the case, those user groups have to be catered in that very specific way. But there are things that technology can can be used in order to make the process a lot faster and find efficiencies and reduce you know, some of the operational leakages. Um, and those are the things that can be done from an insurance uh, value chain perspective. Um, but for customers, we have to serve the different customer segments the way they like to be served. And I think that is the holy grail of any kind of innovation is don't try and change the user's behavior it's a very hard thing to do find a platform with a certain intention but then the users kind of change it to whatever they want the future of insurtech like any other industry is a is a seamless magical experience that is, that is the holy grail of any industry. We want to be able to, to leverage the data, to be able to provide products to people at the time of need and provide proper coverage. Um, when can we achieve that? Depending on the product line, maybe in a few years, maybe it might take a, little, a, a bit longer than that. Um, but it will definitely happen and, and, and that is the trajectory that the industry is going towards. And I'm quite impressed by the, the speed of innovation for insurance and I think last year and this year um, it's kind of like started growing rapidly and we're seeing a lot of action happening in Australia. When I first got into the space, there was almost nothing happening and it benefits everybody. So it benefits the whole industry, um, which means startups and, and incumbents can work together because it is impossible to exist in the ecosystem on your own.